So you're looking to create the ultimate disaster recovery plan. Whether you've been using Veeam for years or just deployed your first Veeam backup and replication console, we make it simple in order to create those policies and maximize the uptime availability of those tier one applications and its data. Let's go ahead and dive into our lab and take a look at those steps needed in order to create those policies. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we can create those CDP policies as well as edit, but even more importantly, ensure our, our Veeam console is set up in a way where these policies will function properly. Now we have one already set in place, but in order to ensure that this is gonna be successful and syncing appropriately, if we wanna dive into our backup infrastructure and then inside of our vCenter servers here, right here on the left-hand side, if I do a right-click or two-finger click, I can then manage those IO filters. Now we're leveraging VMware's VAIO filter, and this will allow us to choose those clusters or hosts that we wanna go ahead and push that filter out to. Now this has already been completed in our lab, but just hitting apply here, takes just a couple of seconds in order to execute that process. Now, last but not least, which we also have another video diving a bit more deeper on, is gonna be our backup proxies. Now, our proxies are, of course, our heavy lifters of the equations. They're used for backup jobs, they're also used for replicas, a whole nine yards. And in Veeam with CDP, we have our unique proxies that we can just deploy, same as we did before, by either doing that right-click or by leveraging some of the, uh, the, the ribbons here in the top of the screen. So here we can add that Veeam CDP proxy. And again, check out the video Video, we walk through this really quickly. Now, again, we've added our proxy, we've added that filter onto all necessary uh, vCenter servers, and at that point, we can start creating those VMware uh, uh, CDP policies. Now, going back home and into our job section, just like anything else, we have our ribbons up top, and I can also do a right click in the workspace here and create another CDP policy. So of course, just like any wizard, it's gonna ask us to go ahead and give it that policy name, as well as some advanced feature sets, such as replica seeding. We can do some network remapping, perhaps you're on different virtual networks or even re-IPing in the event that your DR site has a different IP addressing scheme. So there we can also choose our virtual machines. This should look familiar for anybody that's used Veeam in the past. We just choose those machines that we wanna go ahead and uh, add to the CDP policy. And you can do this by looking at hosts or clusters, VMs, templates, tags, the whole nine yards. But once we make those elections, which you can choose at higher levels, you can actually uh, make it autonomous, right? So if you add virtual machines or deprecate them out, well, this CDP policy will keep in line with that and ensure that you're always uh, you know, up to date, you know, replicating in CDP uh, what's relevant. So now we choose this particular VM. We can go ahead and proceed through the wizard and then give it that destination. I'll go ahead and quickly choose its destination here. And in the process, we just need to choose our resource pool as well as our uh, our VM folder and data store if necessary. Now this pretty much being a, a small lab, pretty straightforward here. And at that point, we can go ahead and proceed through the wizard. Now keep in mind, this is not only for you know your CDP and failing over, but this has long-term and short-term retention in the sense that we can uh, you know, keep these for longer periods of time and actually have application consistency. We do this by you know, scheduling it appropriately, which is the next step, and maybe get a little bit ahead, but you'll also notice our data transfer leveraging those source and target proxies. By default, it's automatic, but if you do have specific proxies you'd like to pin to this policy, you would just choose uh, this choose option and make those elections here. Now we go into our schedule and then give it that defined RPO. And this is one thing that is just brilliant. Notice we can go down to two seconds if need be. And it's going in and even scheduling this, we can cater it to our environment needs. And then we can even choose our short-term retention, enabling those point in time recoveries within a certain amount of hours or even minutes. Apart from that short-term retention, we have the long-term retention. It's actually my, my favorite aspect of CDP in a sense, that we can create those additional restore points and schedule this in a sense where we can tell it when we want that crash consistency or application consistency. You'll notice by default, 24 seven, it's gonna be application consistent, but perhaps you just have a specific need for perhaps uh, you know late afternoon only having crash consistent flexibility is there for matching those needs. So once we proceed, we can go ahead and get those schedules in place and then determine our guest processing. 
Now, this is nothing new. This just ensures that we quiesce those applications before backing them up and ensuring we get those nice, clean uh, CDP rights over to that DR site. So from there, checking that box, going into applications, we can handle all pertinent information such as permissions and users and whatnot here. Now, that is the long and short of creating that CDP policy. And once this is completed, just going to canceling out of this one, you'll notice that I can again highlight and see different uh, results and, 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 and you know the performance of that uh, policy in action. So we can even go in, see those restore points, the bottleneck, the amount of data transferred. So it is giving us some really great information you know, right in front of us. No need to dig deep to get these type of uh, data, data points. So thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out all the other videos, including backup and replication, Office 365, and the list goes on. We appreciate your time. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.